So moving along with more photo etch, right? Now, as I, um, as I mentioned in the last episode, we've got this problem of these 3D decals not actually having anywhere to place them. So this is where we can use some of this photo etch, or you could go off and get some plaster card and cut it to shape. But we're gonna go off, and if I just bring you in, Right, we want this piece just here, piece number eight. I'm gonna come in with our um, nice Tamiya diamond foil. Right, and this piece here, I'm just gonna sort of remove the actual, you know, paint or print that they um, put onto this. So I'm gonna be try and be careful, right, just to nicely scrape it off without bending anything and this is going to be a nice base for us right and it does seem to just come right off as soon as you start getting that print just off just there so um, hopefully as you can see there I've now removed that bit of print right and then we can do the usual removing of the photo etch off of the fret right and what we should have here now is something that's perfectly shaped. Now this is very small and hard to see, but we have a bit of um, 3D decal just there, which now can sit on that little piece just there. So I'm just gonna get out some, um, I'm gonna use the the thick uh, super glue again, right? Just because I do find, you know, when you want this, this we want to stick on quite a bit because you'll see in a bit because it will sort of overlap and sort of be hanging in the air slightly. So we want something that's going to be quite strong to hold it into place. Super glue is good for that, um, but with the thick super glue, we've got time to maneuver and place it. All right, so it's going to be going just on this side, just here, and it's going to go right there. All right. So I'm actually going to get a little blob of our thick super glue right where this bit of photo etch is going to go, which I'm then going to get some tweezers, right? Because this is very small. Right, get that just nice, and then what we want to do is just very carefully get that into position and hopefully as you could see that's like bit down very quickly and we do have a bit of maneuvering time just to make sure that is exactly where we want it right, so there we go yeah nice amount of maneuvering time to be able to play Right, and so with that in position now, we've actually got a surface contact area to put our 3D decal, just like I have done this side as well. You will see bits of photo etch where we can actually place some of our bits of 3D decal just on there. So we're kind of all sorted now for that kind of stuff. Always good as well just to quickly maybe sort of, you know, put this together, right? Just test fit, just let's make sure that none of this photo etch is gonna sort of get in the way. Um, always a good one to, to do that kind of stuff. We also have, uh, I've also finished this, right? All this lovely, gorgeous photo etch that's gone in there, really sprucing up that rear um, wheel well just there, as well as I do believe that's an air brake as well, really gonna show that off. Um, we do have a piece just here as well, right, for the front wheel well. Um, good to sort of come in with, I won't glue it exactly yet, but good to come in with um, some tweezers, and I have found it's best, see, See what looks like um, a bit of a, a sort of a pipe or something? It's right there, right? We want to place this. You'll find that if you try and place this in this way, it's going to have trouble getting past that pipe. So I'm going to turn it so as we go under that first, right? It is still a bit tricky to sort of get it in there, right? And then over this side, right, we've got to try and get it past 
um, some more little assault sort of pipes going on in there but we don't want to press it down so it bends so I'm just going to actually use the tweezers to you know remember how we do all that sandwiching when sort of cutting and filing things down I'm going to try and sandwich this so we don't bend it and then I'm going to sort of press it down and it just pops down and there we go we just need to glue that into place I don't know if I'm going to actually play around with something inside here because um, I mean as you could see already before I put that in there was no detail at the bottom there really bad boy kinetics on that one but even Eddard has still kind of left this a bit of a half done job um, I did go off and I have sort of like cut off the landing gear always good to sort of find out you know is that just going to be visible and it does look like it is so might put a bit of plastic card on there maybe a bit of scratch building which we're basically going to move into now right I'm going to just quickly show you we have our ejector seat just here and hopefully what you could see is this at the back this is what we're going to do some scratch building with we have all this at the back and again absolutely no detail whatsoever that is potentially going to look a bit pants especially if we're going to all this effort of 3d decals photo etch and all that so time to do some actual um some I forgot what it was called now to do some scratch building right now to do this uh, first off you may have noticed I've got out the red pen right where we're going to be doing our scratch building we don't want to be doing it where we need to glue so I'm just getting out a red pen right which is always a good one just to sort of mark out the limits of where we can do our scratch building so as you can see that's going to go into our um, fuselage section there where it's going to glue so we know not to do any sort of scratch building on those areas now which is good so that's all good and ready to start throwing stuff down now I have done loads and loads of research trying to find out trying to find some reference photos of what actually is going on at the back here and I just cannot find anything at all i do apologize i have really really looked if you guys find something fantastic but i'm going to just show a couple of nice sort of um rescribing uh, keep forgetting the name here uh do some nice um scratch building techniques so if you do find a reference photo hopefully it will sort of guide you in how to sort of make it and whatnot and um, we do also have a nasty little well not a nasty but a bit of a um um eject pin mark just here I've marked it in red so I know that I need to come along and get some sanding sticks out we've got these sort of thin sanding sticks these are as you can see a little bit too big but um, Albion alloys which we do stock these in in the store by the way do do some nice really really thin ones which just gets in there just just nice always good to have these kind of thin ones they do do the um <clears throat> the needle ones as well if you're really in a tight space but you know what these will get rid of this ejector pin mark just just nicely right and it's just a case of you know start off course you know something like a one 160 200 grit and just work your way down you know probably get into maybe a 2000 grit or something like a nice fine grit where you actually get the plastic looking like the rest of the plastic until that um, ejector pin mark's gone that was a raised one so it's just sanding um, if you if it was a, a recessed one we'd obviously have to fill it so um, moving along with that then we'll get some scratch building out now quick tip for you um, with these any kind of sanding stick really um, you're really kind of using the point using the edge and I've just kind of come to this point where this one has worn down right no need to go off and buy or use a new um, sanding stick right easy nice quick easy tip right what we do is we just get out some cutters get focused and all we do is just cut off so we've got a nice clean tip to be able to carry on using just the tip of our standing stick to get rid of these ejector pin marks. 
Now with scratch building, we can move along and we can get all sorts of little trinkets here, there and everywhere. I mean, it really is a creative kind of thing. Um, I was trying to find some resistors that you find in electronics. Those are absolutely cracking for this kind of stuff. Just couldn't find any. Uh, but good, good sort of basics to start with. I mean, we have things like this. We have um, styrene plastic and these are already pre-cut to different sort of you know, lengths and squares and rectangles and circle the sh shapes. So it's good assortment there. Um, you even have things like uh, what we've got. We've got plus models, lead wire, right? Different sizes and stuff. There is like copper wire as well, again, in different sizes. Um, going a little bit cheaper. Um, I, I did used to go off and buy fuse wire. Absolutely cheap as chips although chips aren't really that cheap these days. Uh, but where we kind of want to start is any sort of like scribing, right? We could do some sort of recess panel lines, recess rivets, just to kind of make that sort of, like there's panels that can be opened up at the back or something. Again, I've got no references to go on, so I'm kind of just winging it, so to speak. But like we could, you know, coming with these bits, this is by, what's this by, um, Dream Models, right? Nice kind of bits of photo etch cutting tool, uh, sorry, not photo etch, um, scribing sort of templates and stuff. And I could probably go off and pick one of these squares and try and make some sort of a panel. Could probably peg this down just to help keep it stable. Now I would normally sort of have this um laid nicely on the bench but i'm trying to get you on camera at the same time so this might not be so neat but yeah we come in with a plastic scriber 2 by tamia and we can use so this is going to move i'm trying to hold this tightly and keep you on camera sorry but there we go maybe this will work but yeah we kind of use the actual <coughs> template inside right and we can just nicely cut that um, again I'm trying to keep you on camera because the angles are going to be a bit tough for me but we just follow it around it's a nice little square you could use a sewing needle in a pin vise as well and just sort of mark that out around this is probably going to be best for me to be honest with you because again trying to keep you on camera and do this this should give me a nice outline of our sort of panel that we're trying to do here so then i should be able to then nicely sort of go freehand after a bit of a template being made right <coughs> now i am just sort of lightly dragging along Right, we'll get on to scribing more later, but holding it in the right way is always a good one. And we can make a nice sort of recess <coughs> panel line just there. We could come in with a sewing needle, really cool tool, nice, easy, cheap sewing needle in a pin vise. And we could probably sort of just stab in, you know, in each corner, maybe some screw holes or something. Right, just to give us ourselves a recess rivet. Right, and once I've sort of tidied that up a little bit better, we should have like a nice little panel at the back. Um, we could put bolts and everything all around it. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, because it's a recessed, I'm not too bothered about the fact that it's going to be covered up a bit by uh, ejector seat, which, as you can see, those red lines are shown where we can actually put detail. But you know, simple things like actually putting in say um, I don't know maybe a bit of bulkhead detail or something we can sort of generally cut these to around about the size that we want right and probably just place that in there keeping it within my borderline so to speak and get some Tamiya extra pin cement probably the quick setting one on this and we can just touch and run that all the way along there and that should hold pretty quickly you know good old sewing needle in the pin vise again just to make sure that's in position as you can see i've left all that excess at the top there which is no big deal because once this is dry which should be pretty good now i could probably just nip that across the top and that will give us some more detail um i could probably 
put, I don't know, <coughs> maybe another piece that goes across that way to sort of crisscross it, right? Um, and then just cut it where the red lines are. Um, what I'm also gonna do is just make a little bit of wiring to go with that. Again, the sewing needle is coming back out. I'm gonna try and use, have I got some thinner than that? You know, as thin as possible copper wire. I don't think I've got anything thinner than 0 0.3. Yeah, looks like that's about as thin as I've got. So I've got some 0 0.3 mil here, which is pretty sort of nice and thin. I'm going to cut out, trying to find the end of it first. So after finding the end of it, I can just cut a nice little piece of that off. Using our sewing needle, all right, well actually, a good one's always good, because these are normally sort of like bent in some way, all right, so just to get them to come out nice and straight, all right, always good to have a nice metal ruler, and by just going along with the metal ruler, right, and just rolling along, it'll get out any sort of kinks, right, it will straighten it up all nicely, so nice quick one there, and again I'm going to come back to the sewn needle, I'm going to leave some nice excess on one end, but I'm just going to basically now start to wrap this around, right, the tighter, the better, right? I'm just gonna ooh, keep wrapping it around and we can get ourselves a nice sort of bit of wiring that looks like some sort of cord or something, some sort of maybe um, communications, I mean, you name it, any kind of wiring. And we just wrap this around and keep going until we got a nice bit of length so things are starting to take shape a little bit by just putting those bits of plastic card on there um, i've just right wound up our bit of copper on here which we can now just basically pull off right and we should have hopefully see a nice coil bit of wiring on there i'm just going to get out a um little sort of drill here now the size drill bit i'm using is a 0 0.4 right we've got a um, 0 0.3 bit of wire right using a 0 0.3 mil needle uh, sorry drill it's just not going to quite fit you want to go that little smidge bit bigger for our piece to go in so i'm just drilling a nice little hole just there right so we can sort of now represent this going in to our little hole just there, right? And what we can simply do is maybe sort of down here, we'll drill another hole, or maybe even just let this kind of like go around the back, just down there, maybe, which might actually look a bit better just to go around the back, right? But I can basically just sort of nicely I'll just pull that nice and tight. So at the back here, I could probably just put a blob of super glue, nice and easy. I'm thinking actually this will probably go nice. Just kind of go in around the back underneath here. So one good thing about copper wire, we can sort of bend it into position a bit. All right. So I'll start by actually, yeah, I'll just start by sort of like gluing with some super glue at the back there. Right, and then I'm just going to sort of hold it and sort of try and bend it in position so that hopefully I can just glue one point at the back, one point at the bottom here, uh, maybe leave it at that, but I may have to do maybe a little bit of gluing in the middle somewhere just to kind of get it just the way I want it, um, which I'll probably use something like thin super glue just so it can sort of suck underneath it and we won't have like big blobs of glue. While we're doing this, we want to be constantly wherever it's gone, checking, you know, get that ejector seat in there and just make sure that nothing <coughs> is going to sort of hinder putting our ejector seat just in there. Also, um, you may have noticed um, I've kind of not quite cut away 
all of this you know i have gone past that bit of red marker there because i want to get it as tight as possible um <clears throat> in scale modeling um it's easier to remove a bit and just have to remove a bit rather than removing too much and you've got to add adding stuff in scale modeling isn't always the best all right so hopefully you should see that this isn't although actually it is kind of pretty good actually that is actually virtually spot on i think that's in nice and tight yeah that's actually spot on so i've cut that spot on which is um a little bit worrying because it shouldn't have been but there we go we try the other side and it looks like i've done it spot on there so actually i've got quite lucky there um although i've gone slightly over that red mark so just keep that in mind but yeah that's going to look a lot lot nicer and a lot lot better um i have come along it's a bit hard to see i'll show you when we sort of spray it up and stuff but um i have done some rivet rivets along here again i'm just using the sewing needle and i'm literally just kind of just wherever i might just come along and just start Put in some rivets, right? I mean, it does take maybe a bit of practice to be able to actually get the distances right, get the pressure right, just so as you make these a line of rivets look really, really nice. It takes a bit of practice. I mean, there are tools you could come along. I mean, <coughs> RB Productions, you've got uh, trumpeter they all do these like rivet making tools right where you simply just i could probably share in the back here you can just sort of like run this along right and you'll have a whole bunch of you could see it on camera maybe you have a bunch of rivets rolled out a bit hard to see again right uh, it's up to you I, I do prefer using getting used to using just a sewing needle just because you could be way more precise and get in there where you need to um, these can be a bit clumsy sometimes 